we'll continue to keep tabs on where this goes next. Thank you. Thank you, Mark. Well, one of the reasons why Ontario refuses to fund combination therapy is the lack of supporting medical research. And Dr. Sanjay Mehta is one of the few doctors who treat people with PAH disease. And he says waiting for that research amounts to watching people die. He joins me now via broadband. Doc, I, I don't know. This is, this is one of the things where we think that right across Canada, people are treated equally by our health care system. And then you hear a story like this, and I just can't, I can't believe it that you could be funded in one province and here it's a tough luck that can result in the fact that people will die. Why, why is this happening? Well, Mark, we don't understand it any more than you do. This is something that we've dealt with for a long time. And amazingly, Ontario, which previously was one of the richest provinces, access to very good care is now falling behind the times. Now, does it just come down to uh, this is a bureaucratic decision that, that is made by somebody? I mean, I don't, I, it seems almost stereotypical to say there's some cold-hearted bureaucrat somewhere who just doesn't care about human life. But when you look at it, you, you do beg the question, why are they making a decision that's already resulted in the death of one woman? You know, we don't want to blame anybody individually, but these are all people. They want to do the right thing. And yet the way the mechanism works is there are clerks who get the form that I submit, giving them details about my patient, about the therapy that they need, and they have a checklist. And if you don't meet that checklist, for example, you're already on a drug, they say no. And then it comes back to me. We spend more time writing letters and forms, and sometimes you get to the right person who says, I've got to do something, and they approve it. So it's a very much hit or miss process, and it's very hard for us to work with that system because it's not well spelled out either for Yeah, us. well, that's crazy that it's ar it can be arbitrary like that. I mean, especially if this should be based on science. Okay, let's leave. I'll put my passion aside here for a second. Give me the science on this. I mean, is, just a, is this currently the best approach to dealing with this disease right now? So the best approach, we believe, is using combination drug therapy. And that's because there's not a single drug that has ever cured a patient with pH. Unfortunately for patients like Cindy, if you have pH, you're going to be better for a while. You may also live longer, but most patients will die of pulmonary hypertension one day. And so if one drug helps for a while, it makes perfect sense to try two or three drugs, which is exactly the same approach in cancer therapy, in heart disease, and asthma. The challenge is that these drugs, compared to those other drugs, are much more expensive. So they range from forty to $100,000 a year. And if you start adding them together, very soon you're up to a quarter million a year for three drugs. Yeah, and, and then you get down to putting a price tag on somebody's life. Unfortunately, that's what they do. Okay, so why is it, though, that if, 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 if Cindy were to live in B.C., that should be okay, but not in Ontario? Why do you have this discrepancy between two provincial governments and their approach? I think it's developed because of individual relationships. And so there's a small number of us physicians who look after this disease in the country. There's about 25 or 30 of us. Right now, there's only three in BC, and they've worked very closely with their government, who's been listening to them to set up a system that works for many patients. In Ontario, there's a little bit of a larger number. There's about 10 or 12 of us doctors who do this. And the government, until last year, had never listened to us. And finally, last year, we had another issue come up we complained, we had a chance to sit down with the Ministry of Health and actually reverse that problem. And this going forward now is a good scenario for working together to fix this problem as well of combination. Well, and I guess we'd be hoping that there would be a positive outcome. But if not, I mean, would you support Cindy's decision just to move to BC? Well, it's terrible that she has to do that. You know, we do the best we can for individuals. And so what I look at is if somebody's failing one drug, I look for the clinical research that we're doing and sometimes you're lucky to get a patient into a study where a second drug will be paid for by the company and that works as well sometimes if you run out of options you have to go to lung transplantation which is kind of a final option it's sad that she has to move to another province I don't think that's an answer what we're asking the Ministry of Health to do is to say look it may not be that combination therapy should be approved for every patient with pulmonary hypertension today but on a case-by-case -case basis as happens now around the world, this is standard of care in the U.S. and Europe, allow us to use combination for some patients like Cindy and Bonnie Cameron before she passed away. Okay, doctor, good to talk to you today. Thanks so much. Thank you. Okay, let's switch gears now. When you sit down to log on to YouTube, you're probably there for those wacky videos or dumb videos, depending on how you see it. But more and more institutions...